I'm Julian Millichamp. I've been making cricket bats for 31 years. Over this period of time, I've been asked many questions about care, maintenance and knocking in. I'm putting this video together to cover all these issues and more. When you purchase your new cricket bat, the first thing you need to do is prepare your bat before knocking in. There are two methods of doing this. The first method is oiling. This is using a traditional raw linseed oil and preparing the bat by laying three to four coats of oil upon the face, side, edges and toe of the bat to ensure that the bat has plenty of moisture in it before you start condensing the fibres of the willow. The second option is to apply a modern facing. This is a self-adhesive clear sheet that can be applied to the bat. This doesn't soften the willow and will actually leave the bat almost ready to go straight into the nets on the face with minimal preparation. However, the toe, the edges and any other exposed timber, including the back of the bat, must have raw linseed oil applied to it. The traditional oiling of a cricket bat is still very common today, despite the modern day facings. Some people however say that oiling a cricket bat adds far too much weight. I would like to demonstrate to you that this is not the case. To demonstrate what a coat of oil weighs, I'm going to first weigh the empty cap. 0 0.1 of an ounce. I'm now going to fill the cap with oil the equivalent of two coats of oil on a cricket bat. The weight has increased by 0.2 of an ounce. This is the equivalent of two coats of oil. I would recommend up to four coats of oil, therefore your bat will only increase by 0.4 of an ounce and this is less than a half an ounce in weight. In extremely hot and dry climates, a little more oil may be necessary. A half a cap of oil will be ample for your first coat. Apply the oil directly onto the blade. Smear the oil on the bat with your fingers. Have a rag handy for a cleaner. I recommend going straight onto the timber and not applying the oil to a rag which will absorb all the oil before it reaches the cricket bat. Turn the bat and smear the remaining oil onto the back of the bat. Not forgetting the toe. Leave the bat in a position where the oil can soak into the face overnight. The oiling process needs to be repeated four times over the next four days. This cricket bat has been very well oiled. It has a perfect colour and probably up to six coats of oil have been applied. What I would like to do is cut this cricket bat in half and show you how deep the linseed oil penetrates into the willow. As you can see from this dissected cricket bat, the oil very much sits on the surface. There is little to no penetration into the willow. The oil, therefore, is sealing in the existing moisture that is in the cricket bat and not putting additional moisture into the bat. As you can see, this bat had the perfect amount of oil and its penetration into the willow was minimal. Option two is applying a facing to your cricket bat. This is my preferred option.
To stop your bat from drying out too much and losing its performance, I recommend that you keep your bat in its bat cover, out of direct sunlight, and keep the correct amount of oil on your bat and sealed at all times. Once your bat has been faced or oiled, you are now ready to start knocking your bat in. My preferred method is by using a mallet. If you can get a mallet with a little bit of weight in it, this will help to create the indentations needed to perform this process. Start gently on the middle. Once you create a dent in the middle of the bat, move that dent out towards the edges and up towards the top of the bat and down towards the tie. You can knock the mallet out towards the edges but I do not recommend knocking the edges in on a 45 degree angle or the leading edges. If you knock the leading edges and the edge on a 45 degree angle, eventually you will split the edge. Once the dent has been pushed out to the sides, down to the toe and the top, you are ready to go into the nets. With your oiled bat, you must make sure that your four coats of oil have penetrated and dried on the bat slightly before starting the knocking in process. Your bat, after oiling, will be slightly softer than a bat that has had a self-adhesive facing applied. I therefore recommend a gentler approach to the knocking in and a slightly longer period of time. The same principle of knocking in a bat with a facing is to create a dent in the middle, move it out to the edges, down to the toe and up to the top of the bat. Once this has been performed, again you are ready to go into the nets and face a cricket ball. The toe is the most vulnerable part of any cricket bat. It has to put up with yorkers, moisture damage, wear and tear on hard pitches, and it needs to be correctly protected. There are a couple of options for maintaining and looking after the toe of a cricket bat. The first option is oiling. This must be repeated and kept up, especially when you feel that the toe is starting to become dry and the oil has been worn through on the hard pitch. The second option is shugu. This is a soft adhesive that's applied to the toe. This is excellent for playing cricket on astro pitches and hard training tracks. Shugu is an easy product to apply and available in most hardware stores. I will demonstrate its application. One tip with shugu is to use a cup of water to smooth out the shugu on the toe so it sets like a very clean, neat gel. Let the bat stand overnight before use. One type of toe protector that I do not recommend is an epoxy resin toe. These set very hard on the base of the bat. With an epoxy toe, if you jam down the Yorker, there is a good chance that the epoxy will shatter, taking the soft willow with it. If you do suffer toe damage on your cricket bat, and you receive a crack on the bat that goes from the face of the bat to the back toe of the bat, and then travels up the bat, front and back, generally this is not repairable. If the toe of your bat does sustain damage, sometimes it is not the end of the bat. Unless it goes from front to back, as explained earlier, but more of a split on the side, these can be opened and glued. The old fashioned bone handled knives are ideal for this job. You can open the split whilst applying PVA glues or other glues to the crack. Ensure you drive the glue deep into the crack.
When you're satisfied you have enough glue in the crack, it can now be clamped. My preferred option is to use a stretchy packaging tape. By wrapping this tape tightly around the base of the bat, the crack can be pulled nice and tight, giving a perfect repair. Once the glue has dried on your repair, the tape can be removed. You can then wrap either a fiberglass tape around the toe for reinforcing or a binding twine can be used in a similar manner. Being able to replace a grip on a cricket bat is a handy thing for every cricketer to know. Firstly, the grip is made for a long handle and needs to be cut down to size to fit a standard men's bat. This is done with a pair of scissors and being very careful not to nick or leave a cut or a jagged edge that then may split and travel down the grip. When the grip has been taken down to size, it is now ready to fit using a gripping cone or other methods that are available. I find that the gripping cone is the easiest method. You simply slide the grip onto the cone and roll the back grip off the end of the gripping cone, turn it around and put it back on the opposite way. Slide the rubber grip over the cone down to the bottom. This will hold at the bottom of the gripping cone whilst you actually put the bat into its position. Insert the cone over the bat handle and push with your thumbs and hand behind the grip. Now using your palms, roll the grip down to the shoulder of the bat. Straighten out the bottom of the grip over the shoulder, simply use your forefingers and thumbs. Any slight creases can be removed by adjusting the grip using the thumb. If the grip becomes too long from the end of the handle, if the grip has been cut to the right length, it can be adjusted by simply pushing air through the grip with a flat palm of the hand. Some people prefer to secure the grip with a little bit of black electrical tape or other types of tape. Fitting a grip can be made to look easy, but sometimes people have real difficulties. My experience is the cheaper the grip, the harder that they are to apply. So make sure you buy a good quality grip. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any other questions, please send them in to me and I'll try and address these in the next video clip I produce. Thank you.